So we'll start with Drinking Gold. These are these are the new ones that we're getting for. These are the new ones that we're getting for the Shadow League that we've gotten over the past week. Um, and then we'll get into a few of my own. And then we will go into the OLL games to comment. And it'll be super fun. I can't wait. I'm about to splash Drinking Hole into Cassilia. Dude, Drinking Hole, it looks so much fun. It looks so much fun. It is now a permanent water buff. A, I love it. Uh, and it, it fits only a certain... Benny's busy, we'll post him later. That's fine, man. That is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, the, the Drinking Hole is not going to be played in every deck. It's going to be played if you have a lot of beast cards that deal damage. So, like, Thunderslug is not going to be utilized with this. You're going to have to play a beast-centered storm deck or place water within beasts that deal damage. Um, but it's it's a so subtle ping for healing that water that usually healing for water has been more of a burst style. You don't really get those pings of healing, which kind of makes Drinking Hole unique in the way. Um, but, dude, Drinking Hole looks so good. Klaus is getting a point of health. Ah, Blastbot just ruining this perfect scenario. Dude, Blastbot ru ruins so many perfect scenarios. Blastbot targeting locations with how widespread locations are and how potent they are for their buffs. Blastbot is insane. I think that it does need a damage reduction on Blastbot. I think it actually did. It got three damage down in damage reduction, which is fine. But it's still an insane... Uh, buff removal card of how good location buffs are. It's so strong. It's so strong. I don't. I don't understand what they were thinking when they made Blast Bot. Uh, because Tech is just. It's so good at removing buffs. It's so good at removing buffs. It's almost better than uh, Hammer Down Enforcer. It. It's that good. You think it should be four or five damage for it's worth running? Well, uh, TS, you could be the only one. You could be the only one. I think it's fine. I think we find it two damage, in my opinion, because of how strong those are. No, Blast Bot, a lot of the family buff removal got changed to three damage now. Um, the only one that got an increase was um, the the corrupted, um, the beast one for Dread. Got four damage, remove one beast buff. Don't know why that got increased to four. Don't know why. I would have been fine with three damage. Remove one beast buff. No, there was another one that was three damage. I know the Astral one, unless they changed it, doesn't even do damage at all. Um, I don't know about the, the Nature one. The Chimchu that removes undead. The Insect one is healing. There was another one that dealt three damage, remove a family buff. The Dread one got increased to four for reasons beyond my comprehension. I cannot think of the, the one that was uh, three damage, remove a family buff. I can't think of it now. The new fire one is four. That one is robot though, right? Four damage, remove a robot. Yeah. Yeah, that one I would have been fine with three. You know, honestly, like that's 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 kind of where I'm like, why? Um, are they are they not just doing four damage remove a buff that wants to be removed? Kind of, yeah. The robots are now buffs that want to be removed. Um. But yeah, I th I think the more widespread these families are becoming, the more potent those remove a specific family member is going to become. Um, and location is already widespread throughout all six orders. That blast spot is just insane. Blast spot is just insane with how good it does. Uh, I think blast spot. If if they if blast spot could return to four damage, if it changed what family it removes from, if it changed what family blast spot removes from, then I'd be fine with it. I think location is so potent that removing locations makes it the best family to remove. Um. I'd be okay with, say, machines. 
Um, they already have a robot one. I'd have to look, but yeah, locations because of how widespread they are is just insane. But yeah, uh, drinking hole. I I love drinking hole. The fact that it's now a a permanent water buff with a, a subtle increase to healing if your beasts deal damage. Drinking hole is just just really good. I like drinking hole. I think it's it's gonna see some big play, um, especially in it, it makes it more suitable for a uh, a large water buff deck, which is something that I still want to try and build. Rough scale racketeer. Rotate one location buff on the recipient to its final corner without triggering the effects that it passes. Why? Why is tech getting all of these things that just mess with location buffs? Why are they getting some of the best families to mess around with? I think Blast Spot should be changed to deal 4 damage, remove 1 location buff, increases in damage by 2. Blast Spot isn't good yet. You might be right. You might be right. But yeah, rough scale rackets here. Like it's another thing that just says, "Hey, if you're playing locations, which every order will be doing, you have some of the best tech in the game." And now that, it, and then deals two separate hits of one damage to the recipient that can be increased, mind you. It's not like that lightning defend card where it does three separate uh, hits of one that can't be increased. This does two separate hits of one that can be increased, which means if you play this on the right one of the um, the 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 racer, this thing does six damage and manipulates your opponent's board. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, you you could destroy mountain forts. You could destroy a bunch of other things with locations. Like, Rough Scale Racketeer and Blast Bot, there's no one's going to want to play locations. No one is going to want to play locations with how much uh, tech that tech has against that specific family. That's insane. That is so insane. Can we all agree that Edda is low tier now? I mean, at first I thought Edda was going to be majorly fun to play. But if all anyone's ever going to be playing is tech, then no, Edda, Edda, Edda's dead. Edda is dead. That's the thing is, if Edda becomes good, tech will become overwhelmingly good, and then Edda will instantly die. And then when Edda dies, then people will start playing other decks. But, um... They gave Mountain the robot removal to counter tech decks easily. We just discussed that robots are the new buffs that want to be removed. So I don't know how well that's going to go. I don't. I really don't. Um, The rough scale rackets here. It's just, it's such a strong card. It's such a strong card. Playing this against Crumbling Tower just hurts my heart, right? Hey, I'll rotate this so you take 7 damage. And then you take an additional 2 points of damage that can be increased. Like, that's so good. Rough Scale Rackets here. I mean, even if you're not... I would probably run 1 or even 2 of these in every every tech deck. If not, like I said, just because of how good and potent locations are, it's gonna it's going to find a place to ruin you. If not just for the fact that this damage can be increased. This is fine if it deals 4 damage. If you can deal 2 sets of 2 damage. That's insane. It's, oh, it's just... I I don't know what they were thinking with Ruskale Racketeer. To give it once again another card against locations. I would have been fine if this said rotate any other family buff. So that tech could have locations and another thing they could tech between. But having it location means that tech just hates locations. It hates it so much. And that's that's just so much hate for one specific family that that family 
even as widespread as it is, is going to be something that feels bad to run now against tech or anything. Rusty compressor. Oh, man. Yeah, recipient means opponent. And Blast Bot's going into the core set. Of course it is. Of course it is. Why not, right? But, okay. Okay, yeah, with Rusty Compressor, all you have to do is rotate it off the first corner. Then Rough Scale Racketeer becomes an 8 damage card. It becomes an 8 damage card. That's insane. With Rusty Compressor and the Rough Scale Racketeer, you're going to have some insane swing turns. And then, of course, you get four healing. You can always restart this with a lot of the tech buffs. I think Rusty Compressor is actually going to be an insane card. Um, just for the increased damage done to other heroes by three while it's up there. Um... That's just, it's just so good. It's just so good. It is a machine, so it's going to fit really nice into a lot of machine things. Um, there's, like, the Slipscale Racer. If you play a machine this turn, you get additional action. Um, so, like, you could you could manipulate that to get a lot of additional actions in, in just a machine-heavy uh, type of deck. But, yeah, I think Rusty Compressor is a good card. It's four healing at the end. Um, but the fact that you have to rotate it yourself consuming one action... If you use one action to start this, and then you get an initial, uh, your last action only increases by three, I think that potent power increase is fine for only one action, but there is going to be ways to manipulate it so you get multiple actions out of it. Everyone here hating on Blast Bot, but Astro Mill will kill every deck in five turns anyway. You could use Fiscus E to rotate it for six damage. Does Fiscus C key say damage then rotate or rotate then damage? Because Terror Shock, you're absolutely right. You could Fiscus Key rotate this for six damage, draw a card. You you could absolutely do that. Uh, the key got changed to it's now a buff. It is now a buff that uh, has two clunky corners of three. And it's, uh, I think it's a defendability. Rotate one of your buffs one step forward. Deal, deal rotation damage. And then draw a card. Just use Flynamo and get an additional action. Yeah, or you could do that. Like, R Rusty Compressor, there's so much you can do with this one card. Um, especially how strong and how manipulative rotating your own buffs in tech is now being. That Rusty Compressor, just because you have to spend an action to rotate it one step forward, doesn't mean that's a downside. It just means it's a, you have to play it in a specific play style. So, I, yeah, Rusty Compressor is a, such a strong card. It's such a strong card. Uh, Savage Octopuff. Five damage, the recipient may discard one defend card from their hand to reduce this by three. I mean, that's fine. It's, it's, first of all, it's a beast, it's a beast attack card that if your opponent discards a defend card, which could be for four plus healing to reduce it by three or five, you're probably only going to get the fact where it's, re where they're discarding a card to reduce it. If they're getting really low on health and this is going to be like a kill shot to them if they don't discard a card, um, cause then it'll, it'll save them. Um, otherwise Savage Octopuff, I mean, it's probably going to replace the Spark Wisp in its five damage attack slot. We haven't seen what Spark Wisp is getting changed to yet, if anything. Um, but Savage Octopuff, I, I think it's a fine attack card. I think it's fine. Um, it has certain uses 
It's definitely not going to be as reliable as some of the other cards, but it's a beast card, mind you, that could make your opponent discard a card. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's a okay. It it has a unique interaction that is enough to make you want to decide on whether you should run it over other cards, and it's not always going to be an auto include. That's pretty much what I'm looking for with a lot of these cards, where. I don't want them to... I don't want every card to look like it's an auto-include. I want them to look like they're good cards, but they fit really strongly in certain decks over others. So you're going to be able to swap some of these cards and think about which ones you want to run over others. And I think this card actually is a great example of that. Is Yeah, it's a good card. It's five, potentially five damage. Could be two. Um, have a good one, Cassilia. Um but it, it's not one of those auto-include cards, which is awesome. I, I like that. I like the fact that it's not an auto-include in every deck. Um, but it does fit certain decks' play styles better than others. So I, I love Savage Octopus. I think it's a great, well-designed card. Uh, Junk Bolt Barnex. I wonder if Flame Bat, Spark Wisp, etc. have changes. Uh, I know they probably do. They probably do. Mercenary got a huge change where it doesn't even look the same anymore. Uh, that I assume that those cards also got changes of their own. So we just have to wait and see what they are. Uh, Junk Bolt Barnex, when one of your robot buffs is about to be removed, heal for one. Now, um, good morning, OFC. How are we doing? Uh, this guy is obviously going to be the hero that you build your sacrifice uh, buff deck around as his ability is just so strong with that uh, play style. Especially if they're all robots that you're sacrificing. I think Junk, uh, Junk Bolt Barnex is going to be a hero that you build a deck around and not a hero that you um what do i want to say that you put into any deck i don't know those look like i mean they could be crab eyes or snail eyes i don't know that's clearly the bubble fish Yeah, it could be a Thunder Slug or it could be a Delivered Crab. And then Mechanical Evolution. This one, I think, is just... I think it's just a great combo buff for a certain archetype playstyle. Attack ability, 4 damage, heal for 2. Um, which is above average on attack abilities because they're usually around 2. So it's twice that and a heal along with it, but you can remove one of your buffs. So it's definitely strong in the uh, playstyle of, hey, I want to remove. Oh man, I just got like a bunch of a bunch of uh, Discord uh, notes uh, on my phone. But if you remove a buff, you get to deal six and heal for four. That's insane. I think Mechanical Evolution is going to find a really fun place in the self sacrifice. Uh, tech archetype that they're pushing through. It is going to feel a little weird to play out and stick out there, but I love this card. I think this card is great. I definitely want to try and build a deck around this. We People were trying to build, um, including myself, we're trying to build combos or decks that ran around combo buffs, that ran around the self-damaging archetype, that I've always been in love with the self-sacrifice archetype that tech was trying to do, and I think this combo is really not necessarily going to help push it to its... Uh, final iteration or a better iteration i think it's just a combo that's it it fits that archetype really well it fits the archetype really well um and i am gonna love trying to build a deck with this i am gonna love trying to build that self-sacrifice wait till you see gyro core implant was that revealed gyro core Im what is gyro core implant oh now i'm very intrigued has that been revealed and I just don't know the name yet? I cannot wait to see it. And then Jumping Lightning. Um, well, TS, no spoilers, man. The name doesn't ring a bell, so it's probably coming down here on this list, and I cannot wait to see what it does. Uh, but yeah, Jumping Lightning, reduce the cost of your combos, or reduce the cost of this combo equal to the number of water buffs. This is the one I was talking about, where it's, it's going to be really powerful. It's going to be really powerful in specific decks it's not a card it's not a combo you run in every deck 
but it's one if you run a lot of water. And this is going to come, most likely going to come down to costing like one, if not zero. One, if not zero. Because of how strong this is and how synergistic this is going to be to play in that archetype. And I'm really loving the fact that these four cost combos that they're making now are so archetype centric that it's not a four cost combo that is an auto include in every deck. The combos should be mixing and matching depending on what play style of deck you want to play and not just, hey, I'm playing tech. All right, these are the five combos you're going to run in tech because they're the best five combos in the game. Now build your deck. It's not like that. And I think that's amazing to see with these new four cost combos that we're getting is that it's like, oh, hey, you want to build this? Well, you're probably going to want to have this combo in there at least. Oh, you, well, if you're changing the deck archetype, you should change the combos too to fit that archetype that you're running. And I, I love that fact about this. I'm really happy that they're starting to do that with these four-cost combos. As we saw just up here with the uh, Mechanical Evolution. Um, just takes Fusion, that combo buff, and Obfuscation. I mean, yeah, you could. You very well could. All you got to do is, uh, um, in a general Carnage deck, put Explosive and Time. Or, the other way around, include Poison and Shadow. Then, yeah, you could do it all the time. Put turret in Carnage. Yeah, you can put turret in Carnage. Well, yeah, for Higgs Fusion, you would need all three. Um, but, yeah, it's it's like, it's like it's so cool. There's such a lot of fun, uh, fun things to do with these four-cost combos. Carnage got a buff, so why not? Dude, I, it's, it's so good. I love all these changes. They're so, so well needed for the game. Uh, we have Illiterate Proofreader. Look at the top card of your deck, put it back to heal for four, or move it to the bottom, draw one card and heal for two. Now, this is one of those, uh, like I said, it's it's good in the sense of what it does for, you know, what is it, four healing, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but if you run it in a certain play style with the Snow Trader, where everyone's deck is turned upside down, if you want that card to be utilized later, um, you can heal for four or no, you heal, you heal for two, put the top card on the bottom of your deck, which in a few turns will then become the top of your deck, heal for two and you draw an additional card. Then when the deck flips back over that top card, you, you essentially know what the top card is because you put it there, but you also get to redraw that card and draw the card that you want in the first place. So illiterate proofreader fits really well into that archetype, but it's also just a generally good card. It's also just a generally good card, which is once again, a card that really fits that style of uh, this card works decently, but it fits really well in a certain archetype. So you're going to want to not play it in every deck. Um, I think Impatient Scholar was underrated in what it did, and this card could be the same. Impatient Scholar is an insanely strong card. In my opinion, I think Impatient Scholar is insanely strong. That This one is going to be one of those cards that like a lot of people don't realize how good it is. Especially Impatient Scholar discarded the card. This one doesn't. It just puts it to the bottom of the deck. And then you draw a card. Uh, that, yeah, it, Illiterate Proofreader and Impatient Scholar are going to be really strong Kribal cards for Astral. They're going to be really good. Um, but they're not going to be good in every deck. They're just going to be good in... They're going to be really good in certain archetypes, but not in every deck. That's true. Astral is just really good of high-quality cards. I'd rather run Twilight Oracle. That's fine. I mean, yeah, Twilight Oracle is a guaranteed card draw and a guaranteed heal for two. But like I said, if you're if uh, you don't want to run elements, you could run this one in a in a deck that really utilizes the knowing what's on the bottom of your deck or knowing what's on the top of your deck. Generically, yeah, I will definitely agree with you, Zeph, that Twilight Oracle is a better. Uh, illiterate proofreader um but i do think there's certain deck archetypes that could come out there or are going to come out there that um oh that's right the damage got increased but the base damage is now smaller so it's a higher risk higher reward type of thing i i did forget about that yes so it's not two plus two it's one plus three now so yeah, it's a high risk high reward type of deal um but yeah i do think that illiterate proofreader is going to find a nice home is going to find a nice home um, in certain archetypes, not over everyone. Lunar Collapse. Now, this one 
correct me if I'm wrong, this one just looks insane. This one just looks really strong. Six, five, and four for three attack abilities is a okay with me in the first place. And then on corner four, you get twelve healing. Mind you, that's that triggers on the same one used on this. So it's four damage then twelve healing. That looks just really strong to me. Mind you, the fact that you can use the attack ability and have it sit there and wait till you really need the 12 healing. True, but if you're running a heavy lunar stuff, uh, that one, um, what was it, triple lunar and solar? There was one that we saw that were like, oh, we're just going to include this in um, Onyx because we need to. Uh, if you run that with Lunar Collapse, that could be fine. Midnight Strike, yeah. Or use Dust Talon. Yeah. Let's just slap Lunar into Carnage. Go for it, man. It's probably one of the better ones, too, too because of Lunar Shrieker and, Mid or and uh, Moonlight Burrower. That Lunar's the best one to slap, the slap in. But... It, Lunar Collapse, it, it just looks really good. It looks really powerful. And one of those things, um, as you said, it's, it's a damage card that uses a lot of defense cards to do it. That's, in my opinion, a, a really good way to build these combo buffs is you don't want a combo that is all healing to just give you, like, a better healing. In a lot of... In nine times out of ten, you're going to want to say, hey, why would I use three of my healing resources to lay one healing card when I could just lay those three healing resources? So to me, having a card that does damage utilizing your three healing resources means that, hey, I'm really ahead in this game, my opponent's waiting... I'm going to spend my healing cards that I'm not really using at this time to do more damage. So I think that nice balance, making it deal damage first and then getting a swing heal later, is fine for how this card's payment is. I think that's actually really fine on that. Um, but yeah, I, I really like Lunar Collapse. I think this card is really strong. I think it's really strong. Um, and yes, it, it does use a lot of your defense capabilities. But we've also been seeing a lot of tech in Lunar as well. So. Alright, here's my follow-up argument. Alright. Why play this when you can mill 30 cards in those four actions? Well, if you're playing a mill deck, why run Lunar Collapse in the mill deck? It's not a combo you run in every deck. It's not a combo you run in every deck. For those those one in a million people who aren't going to, for some reason, be playing Astral Mill, it's a good card. If you are playing Astral Mill, it doesn't matter what combos you play, because you're probably not laying the combos with how strong the action cards is. Why run Astral Period? <laughs> Just slap cartage, why run Astral Period? Why run any Astral deck that isn't Mill? I don't know. I mean, if Astral Mill becomes that potent, we're going to see people slap in three copies of the Draga Hoarder just to tech around it, and then Astral Mill will not have its potency. I'm pretty sure there's other archetypes to run in Astral that aren't Astral Mill. Not every deck has to be Platinum level ranked viable. Exactly, Wrangler. Exactly. Says the Astral player. Hoarder, easy workaround. I mean, there's there's so many texts to that Astral Mill now, too. And, of course, if you're playing Astral Mill, and I'm playing Insect Self Mill, all you're doing is helping me. If you're coming against the Undead, and you don't mill their combo, they're going to put all those Undead that you milled back onto the board. So, like, Astral Mill looks insane, but there's coming with a lot of people that are utilizing their graveyard now. That Mill is, mill is strong and good, but you're going to come into those people who are like, no, that's fine. I want half my deck in my graveyard because I utilize my graveyard more than anything. So, like, 
yes, Astro Mill looks insanely fun, and I'm I'm a complete advocate for it, and I'm really excited to play that type. But I'm also saying that there's probably a lot of archetypes out there that Mill will not be good against. So it's not the be-all, end-all of Astral archetypes. There's going to be others out there, and in which case, Lunar Collapse looks really fun and really good. Just wait till you get Corrosive Demise, RG. And it's true. It's true. But yeah, I, I, I like I like Lunar Collapse. I think it's really cool. Really fun. Um, and just an all-around well-designed card for three, for three Lunar. Because, yeah, an attack ability that does more than two is always going to be a good attack ability. A five cost astral that just discards the top ten of the recipient's deck. Why not just say a five cost that puts the rest of their deck into the discard pile? Why not just that? Oh no, uh Mud Turtle, I do know what you're talking about with Corrosive Demise. That's the new dread one that was released by you, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday. That one looks insane. That combo looks insanely memey. Oh, dude, Fatal Zeph, as soon as Granite comes back, I'm definitely building the Granite deck. Granite was my baby. Granite was my baby. I love Granite. Uh, when you play a location card, heal yourself for one. This can't be increased by effects. Sister Helia, a new one that runs off of locations with how much location hate there is out there. I don't know how viable. I don't know how viable this one would be. She's good for, like you said, OFC. Might be a good multicolor deck. Probably. Um... But with with how much location hate there is, I just don't know how good she's going to be. She'll get a lot of micro ping healing. It won't be able to be increased, which is fine, because with if you build strictly location decks around her, her ability could be 30 healing if your entire deck is locations. Um, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see if Sister Helia uh, has a pretty unique play style with all the locations that are coming out. Um... There's just there just feels like there's so much location hate in tech that if she becomes strong, tech will become strong, and then it'll just immediately counterbalance her. Um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know I don't know how to rate this one. Yeah. Like that's that's the thing. If if tech itself wasn't given all of the location removal, if the location removal was like spread out between just even another order where it was two, then I think Sister Helia actually wouldn't have such a drastic effect on the meta. Cuz like the answer to Sister Helia is tech. With all the location hate the tech has, it's tech. Which case it means that one order is going to shut this down and become so popular that then someone has to find a deck to beat that one order. If her hate was spread out between two or even three orders, then it would it wouldn't just drastically affect the meta that that potently and that strongly. That it would mean that other decks from other orders would rise up to beat her, and then it would still be a mismatch of how the game is played. Um, but it's just like I feel that all the location hate is being put into one order that it really makes the game feel bad in that sense. Um, yes, you can splash those orders into other orders to get the location hate, but I feel like if you're just splashing in explosive to run a blast bot, why not just run tech? That's that's what I'm saying. Um, I, do, I do think for the family hate, they're going to have to make it so that Either they're not in the core set, so it's not so much all in one, or they're going to have to start spreading it out to at least another order. So each order has two families that they have hate in um, instead of just the one. And then the game will feel more balanced in how you can tech without having a cross order into it. 
Um, it looks stally though. It does look really stally. It's healing off of playing locations, which are already very defensive in a sense. It does look very stally. Um, yeah, it, it's just one of those that I'm not sure how to rate. I don't think it'll, in my opinion, I don't think it'll promote healthy gameplay. Um, and it's strictly just because of the family. It's just because of the family. Um, it could have probably said if you play a a Chimchu or a Beast, heal for one. And then it wouldn't feel as stally and wouldn't actually be really strong. Um, but because it's location... Like, strictly because of that one family type, it just feels really stolly and feels almost unviable. And it's going to negatively impact the meta if it ever becomes good because of how much hate one alignment has towards that family. And if the family hate from locations was spread out, like I said, at least to one other order, it wouldn't narrow down the solution to beat it so drastically. If that makes any sense. If you play a Chimchu while your last card is a Chimchu, gain one additional action to move a Chimchu from your deck to your hand. Wait, are you just like making stuff up now, TS, or is that an actual card? Because I could see, I could see them doing that. You give, it a, you give it a 6 out of 5? What? Or is that a 7? You give it a 7 out of 5? I like it. I like it, Fatal's F. But yeah, she does look like she'd be more of an attack hero than a defensive one based on her art picture, too. So, it's she's just really... It's actually a 10. Dude. You get me, man. You get me. You're right here. Right here in my heart. It's a real card, General Chimchu Carnage. I knew it. I knew it. It felt like a, it felt like a, some sort of chimchu carnage. <laughs> but yeah, Sister Helly, it's she just. I don't know. There's there's so many confusing things about her that I'm I'm. Sadly, not a fan of. I I will wait and see, but yeah, just. She's actually a great card to talk about, uh, for card design and how the game how how this one hero could impact the game entirely, if it becomes good. Why are we still on this card? Because I have a lot of confusion and discussion about that one card. Sinkfin Gravedigger. Three healing, move one action card stored from any other cards, from any of your cards under to your hand. This card is insane. This card is finally going to make those store cards really good. Uh, it, it's just so strong. It's actually going to be one of those cards that you might want to splice into other orders because of how strong these store buffs are now in this game. Hello, Ostavok. Oh my word, you're right. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I did not even think of that. The Gravedigger with Asavak. Oh, that's an auto-include in Asavak. I don't care what anyone says. That is so good. I was just thinking of the other buffs that are like, yeah, you know, store Creole buffs under this card. Store anything. Uh, it includes heroes. Yeah, it stores under any of your cards. Your hero is one of your cards. This is so good. You put, you put this into Jolty, you get your combo back. No, it's one action card. Sorry. That's probably why probably it says action so that you can't abuse Jolty with it. It's probably that way so you can't abuse Jolty with it. But that is still really strong. That's still really strong. See a card that can remove stored cards from another hero, which would suck. The Ancient. Oh. Oh, yeah. And it's a heal. Oh, with the Ancient, that's going to fit even more into stall, isn't it? Son of a... Well, we'll have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see. But uh yeah, Gravedigger, this looks this looks insane. Halvar. Why have I why did I look at this card and just not think of the heroes that could use it? Why did I just immediately forget about the heroes that store cards? Why am I that dumb? I'm not I'm not ready for this card. No, I'm clearly not ready for this card and its potential. This
this is so good. It's so much better than I thought. It's so much better than I thought. Mamba the Oracle. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of don't want to be using uh, more gravity actions with Halvar. This is... This is... Oh, man. With, um... Yeah, it's... Railguard, yeah. Yeah, Sunken Gravedigger, or Sinkfen Gravedigger. This is... This... Because of this, this should be a rare. This should be aware with how potent it is. I'd even be okay if this was just two healing. I really would. But this is so good. I'm The three healing is fine. I'm not going to say take the healing down. Because this is not a card you run in every deck. It's a card you run in a deck that does good things with storing. But this is such a good card. No, it, 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 cause it, came, it came in the releases with the stitch work. I'm more a fan of the, with the Ancient. Gravedigger, it's just, oh. Oh, Gravedigger is so much better than I thought it was. So much better than I thought. Uh, attack ability damage. If your last discarded card is solar, increases by one. You move any card in your discard pile to the top of your discard pile. This card is also insane. This card is also insane. Uh, yeah, I'm, the way I'm thinking of this is with the Starhorn Tusker. Yes, it only increases it by one now instead of two. But with Starhorn Tusker, this becomes five, six, seven attack ability. And you can manipulate the top card of your discard pile with this. It's it's Astral's Puppet Master, exactly. This this is so good. And then because of how much Astral does things, you can just restart it on the last corner. This card looks insane. I don't know if it's just me, but it looks really good. It looks really good. It's one of the only Astral cards for gravity that doesn't draw you a card. But this is just really good. Seems better than the combo and easier to get out. Uh, I mean, it does probably less damage than the combo, and it doesn't give you a major heal increase. But, yeah, attack abilities on these Astral cards are really fun to do. Uh, I played. I built a Kree Balloonist deck that actually did really well, and it just ran off Kree Balloonist and drawing the cards. Uh, this one is now, it's a robot, which is unique for Astral as well. But it just, it looks really strong. It looks really strong. We'll have to see if the attack ability moving the top of your discard pile uh, matters all that much. I know Astral has a lot of ways to manipulate it on its own that I don't think they needed this one. But having another tool to be able to do that will help keep the um, keep the card pool variant. And it just, it looks really good. It looks really good. Uh, I mean, if you put this in there with... Um, uh, I mean, if you splash Gravity into Dread. Not saying you need to because Puppet Master, but this card can go into Dread really easily and manipulate the top card. You can use this in a lot of other ways. You can manipulate uh, the top card of your deck with uh, Mountain and make your top cards Elementals and then put them into play. It, there's just so much you can do with the Sun Powered bot, uh, Sort Bot that before you need a Puppet Master, now you can use this card as well. So I, I like this card. I like this card a lot. I think it's really fun. Um, and it's in Gravity, which is the more tech centered Orion that does really good damage, I, th I think that Sun-Powered Sword Bot is going to be really fun. I think it's going to be really fun. And then this Stitchwork Monstrosity, I was a little confused on how it worked when I first saw it. I was a little confused when I first saw it, because um, it just said sort of two undead buffs, but then Fatal's F actually said it's at the beginning of the buff, or in the buff phase, is when it triggers the store up to five. And then it's just an attack ability that deals five damage. That's really good on its own. And then you, with that Gravedigger, to bring these undead cards back. And just... It, it looks so good. Stitchwork Monstrosity is going to be a really good card. Um, especially since it it stores the cards on its own. You don't need to do things to store the cards. Um, as long as you play an, un, an undead deck. And just late in the game it stores those cards. That's fine. Um, there's th You can put three of them in the deck. They have burn. But... Your opponent, if they're saving all their buff removal for your Stitchwork Monstrosities, that means your other buffs are going to sit on the board and do their thing. Um, that Stitchwork Monstrosity is just... It's its a really strong card. 
It's a really strong card, in my opinion. And this, this card is going to see quite a bit of play in the new Undead archetypes that are going to come out from Dread alone. So I, I can't wait for Stitchwork Monstrosity to hit um, and see what, it ha- what it's capable of. I, I'm really proud of that. And then Ultra Morse. This one is really only going to fit in the... Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it triggers when it comes into play, and then on the buff phase the next turn, so it's already going to have four. But yeah, this card with Gorehawk. Th- this is one of those four combo or f- uh, four cost combos that is not going to be running every deck, but it's mon- it's going to fit really well into that new discard archetype that Dread is also trying to do, where you're re- they're really trying to push the discarding the beasts, which is really weird because I have not seen a whole lot of Dread beasts that we've gotten lately. Um so we better start getting quite a bit more Dread Beasts to fit there as well. Uh, but Ultra Morse, mind you, if, if your opponent doesn't have a Beast, you at least get to discard one of your own. Yeah, you can discard a Leech or a Slug. You can... It's so... It's... It's really good. And then it's a 14-point swing of 7 and 7. Um, but yeah, played with Gorehawk, you can discard one of your own Beasts and draw a card while dealing 7 and healing 7. Um, and able to utilize Ultra Moss really well, really well. Um, I would have actually liked to see Ultra Morse. Um, have you discard a Kreeble card? I would have been fine with it being Kreeble. Beast is a lot more centric, but Kreeble's everywhere too. And there's a lot of cards in Dread, uh, that are Kreeble and Umbra that actually want to be discarded or help with the discard that, like I said, the Beast just feels out of place. That Beast is the one they want to discard, but yet they have cards that, if you discard the specific Kreeble cards, you get a bonus to it. Um, easy plus one damage. There you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the fact that it's like discarded Beast, it just feels out of place when all the Dread cards they're adding to the discard archetype are either Umbron or Kreeble, that it feels like those are the two families that should be the discard archetype. It just, it feels really weird. It feels really weird to have it be Beast. Um, but it, to make it better, all they got to do is add more Beasts to Dread. And they've been adding a lot of Elemental, uh, Undead, Kreeble, and Umbron. That's already four families that are adding inclusions. That if you start to add more Beasts into it, I feel like Dread's going to be a little flooded with a lot of families. As opposed to its main ones that you want to. So... Ultra Mors, I like it for fitting that archetype. I, like I said, I just the archetype feels really weird to make you discard beasts in dread. It just it feels weird. It kills beasts of your opponents really well, um, but then it's like, yeah, I want to run beasts of my own. It's like, why? Why would you want to run beasts of your own? All right. Uh, Seer Shine Gut, draw one card face up twenty eight. Two mastery, not much to say about this card. It's okay. It's an okay hero. Double mastery is really good for anything. Uh, drawing a card face up is anything. Can we get a moment of silence for Tusker? I know when Benny said that on stream, I was like, "Why? There's so many fun plays with Tusker that now you're just like, yeah, no." Um, yeah, see your shine gut. It's a, it's an okay card. Uh, Emboldening Strike, 5 damage. If, if the recipient has 15 or less health, kill yourself for 9. Meh. I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about this one entirely. Um, if they have less health than 15, you get a big heal. Uh, which usually means that later in the game, this is going to become a very strong card for swinging back. Um... I feel like I'm responsible with the Flying Fortress. Fatal Zeph, you kind of are. You kind of are. I mean, I that Flying Fortress was massively abused by you, and I love it to death. But it's okay if you want to take full blame to that. I will respect that, in your all honesty. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I mean, if they, have, if they have 20 or less, the 5 damage will come through. Then if they have 15 or less, you heal for 9. So, Emboldening Strike, it's... It's good for what it does. Um, it's two earth and a fire. So the main thing is for healing. So that's kind of where I'm once again on this. You're spending a lot of your healing to get a big healing in a combo. 
and then damage to get a small damage, that it's like, why wouldn't you just use your action cards to do this? I would have almost liked it to be two fire and one earth to have it be this way, so you're spending a lot of your attacks to get a major defense swing. I, I would have liked that in my combo, so that I'm not, like, spending my attacks to do more attack, or spending my uh, defense to get more defense. I mean, they made Flying Fortress Tusker in one of the most recent challenges. Ooh, that's... That's, that's, ooh, that's painful. That is painful. That emboldening strike, I mean, it's, it's fine. I like it. Uh, injured Tusker. Damage your target. If you have more buffs in play than your target, restart this buff. Um, Stampeding Tusker was already an insanely powerful card that did six that had defend ability to restart it. Um, that having this one deal five damage, but then have it, uh, once again, you're only going to use this probably in decks that go wide on board and have a lot of buffs. Um, but at the same time, it's an animal buff that rotates out in three turns. So maybe this actually works pretty well in the, uh, Illidan, the death hunter deck where it's an animal buff that rotates out after three turns instead of four. You could run this in there. It does five damage really good. Um, there's a lot of really unique ways to run this, but I do think injured Tusker is just a really good one. It's just a really good one. Um, it, it looks more like an infant Tusker than an injured one. Let's be honest. This thing looks really small. Nowhere near as threatening as the stampeding one did in its predecessor days. So, art feels a little weird, but I like the I like the style of buff. I do think it's really good. Uh, yeah, Fairpang. No, Fairpang is so... Yeah. You go wide on board so much in Fairpang um, that this, this could just be a really strong card. We don't know what Stampy Tusk Boy is yet. That's true. Stampeding Tusker could have gotten changed. That is absolutely true. Uh, Moss Ridge in. Reduce damage received from attacks at the start of your turn. If you have 15 or less health, heal for one. That's so strong. So strong. Lay a beast, then a defend card, and then if you're low, you heal for one. That's so good. And first of all, it's a, it's a permanent forest buff to play really well into the forest buff deck. This card is okay. I, I'm i look, not looking at this card for healing. I'm looking at this card for forest buffs. Which is, once again, it only fits certain archetypes. You guys with your blast bots and everything that ruins locations. Yeah. Yeah, it kills it. I know. I like it, though. I, I think this card is really fun. Um, it's a damage reduction for attacks only, so it's not all damage reduction. Um, but yeah, it, it's... Nightmares of Pollen Weaver. Dude, forest buffs. Forest buffs are the way to go, man. It's just, yeah, I don't understand why one order got so much location hate. Got so much location hate. I think the location hate should have been spread out throughout a few orders. And not just in one. Uh, it would have made... It would have made the game a little better. Hope you enjoy your stay at the Moss Ridge Inn. Yeah. No, Monsters, it's a nice buff, but like I said, because it's location, like you guys have said, it's just, it's one of those, one of those almost dead cards that if you ever run against tech, you're like, well, there goes that. There goes that. Cool. But yeah, anything with location with how widespread it is, looking at Blast Bot, just going, man, this is terrible. Which is really funny because there's so many beast cards out there with beast buffs that we never look that way with the, uh, with the Umbron that kills beasts. We never look that way. It's always location look at Blast Pot. This card is legal. This card is not illegal. It just means that Mountain is not the only order to destroy items. Creeping Vines looks 